Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Why is it when you need a miracle, it doesn't happen, but when you least expect it, it happens? You are married. You have challenges in your relationship, but your spouse is unwilling to accede to any counseling. Is divorce an option? I'm no How does a parent handle a promiscuous child? A what are considered the do's and don'ts of a born-again so couple who is not yet married? There are always more questions than answers. That so here is Apostle Gemma. Good morning. Welcome to Ask Pastor Gemma. Apostle Gemma and Apostle Vivian are the pastors of Divine Destiny Worship Center located in Diego Martin on the Diego Martin Main Road opposite to Sardonics Drive. The church has branches in Antigua, Tobago, Faisabad, Chagonas, Sangre Grande, and our newest branch in Rio Claro. As usual, today we have an exciting installment for you. Have you ever considered to count the ways that God loves us? Today, sit back, relax, and listen as Apostle Gemma teaches on salvation is a package deal. People are critical of you and they say all kinds of things. Church people, here in a man, they treat that girl in the worst of manner. And it's a good thing I stuck with her because it wasn't long after when I got the same treatment. I made a mistake and had an unsafe boyfriend. Oh boy. Ooh, that was the unpardonable sin. Nobody could talk to me in the church. And in our day, you went to church. It didn't matter. If you got pregnant, they put you in the back seat. Strip you everything. And every Sunday, every Friday, every Tuesday, wherever the service, you're still coming to church with your big belly and sit down behind there and nobody ain't talking to you. Hallelujah. Until they pull you out of Siberia. Because usually it's for a period. And afterwards, when everybody loved the baby. But while you're in Siberia. And we went to church. Nowadays, if the, the usher gives you a limp shake and you ain't coming back. Hallelujah. They won't talk to you. Nobody associating with you. We experienced that when Vivian got the prophetic. The vision. And in our organization, they didn't believe in prophecy. We were leprous. You come to church and nobody ain't talking to you, you're mad. But you were there. They can't talk, they have to hide. They can't speak to you on the compound or nothing. And then you knew. Hallelujah. And I remember this particular lady, she would still embrace us. And the pastor called her and tell her she had to choose. She said, I choose Jesus. Choose what? Choose to talk to me or what? Amen. All you don't know, you know. Yeah. All you don't know, the church. God has brought the church a mighty. Yeah. And there are some churches still like that. Yeah. They call you in front and tell, say what your sin is to the whole congregation. All right. I know you're wrong and everything, but what's the point of this? Yeah. Just if you, you know, you're all right, you move, you stop doing whatever you're doing for a while, whatever, but it doesn't have to take all that. Come on now. Amen. Hallelujah. Presence, his presence. Your presence is heaven to me. Listen to me. We could lose everything, but the one thing you don't want is not to have his presence. Despite the difficulties that Joseph went through, what did the Bible keep saying? And the Lord was with him. Oh God. I don't in the pit, but he with me. That comforting presence. He with me. I'm in Potiphar's house and I'm accused. He with me. I'm in the prison. He with me. And God, you know, when we're going through our difficulties, somehow there is a sense that he, he is with you. And that is what makes your situation tolerable. That is why you could be here. You know, if you only feel that like God leave you. Hallelujah. Psalm 16, 11. Let's just quickly go through that. Thou wilt show me the path of life. 
In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. And let's say the last one. Psalm 23, 4. And we know that one very well. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. His provision, so we're talking about the package. His provision, and we just taken one, I mean there are so many scriptures, but I want to do the entire thing in one day. Let's look at Philippians 4.19. He's Jehovah Jireh. What does it say? What does it begin with? What does that mean? Yes, that in spite of everything, there is something that goes before the but, right? So let's scroll down and see what he's talking about. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Notwithstanding, you have well done that you did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but he only. He's writing, stay right there. He's writing to the Philippians, coming down to that uh, famous popular verse, and he's saying, I want you to know that you are the only people who were concerned with my welfare. When I had the Macedonian call, now remember the Macedonians heard about salvation, sent to ask Paul to come. Of course he went and without provision. Hallelujah. Paul was a tent maker and they said tent was not just tent, the kind of tents that we think of is the statistic cloth or the prayer cloth, that covering or something so, right? And so when he went to do missionary work, he could not continue with his personal work. And people just presume he gone and nobody ain't taking him on. But the people at Philippi caught it. And he said, concerning giving and receiving, but you alone. All these churches he established. But thank God there will always be somebody that God will cause to rise up to take care of you in your need. Yeah. Verse 16. For even in Thessalonica, he sent once and again unto my necessity, unto my need. Not because I desire a gift, but that I desire fruit that be bound to your account. And Paul, I like him. In a way, he kind of liked me. He was very frank. He told them, look, I could work. And when I want money, I could go to a place and I, I, will, I will work and make my money. It's not that you have to give me anything because I know how to put my hands to stuff and make money. But he said, I will abound to your account. Let's go to 18. But I have all and abound. I'm full, having received of Ephraphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. And then he says, but. He says, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Paul was speaking specifically to the Philippians. He was saying, but based on what you did, and then later on, when you read about the Philippians, they were not wealthy. They were a poor church. And you know, Apostle Vivian and I, we have that experience. Sometimes you go to the biggest churches with all the money, and listen to me, they barely give any your, 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 your ticket money. Because he, does, he, just, he doesn't tell, he don't pay, ask for money for his ticket before. He pays and he goes. And whatever you give him is fine. And many times they ain't even giving him money to cover the ticket. If he didn't have another way to live. And we watch him and he will just smile. And we have seen God work. Going to churches, barely could cover your ticket. Remember this person came to him, served the service over the last service, and she said, can I talk to you? It's a good thing he's a person who don't run off from people, pastors, you know, they don't talk to you. So he said, well, sure, and he stopped. And she said, the Lord told me yesterday to go to the bank, take out a certain amount of money, and That's give that. this to you. Because God felt that he was not properly treated. When he opened the money, I mean, it's a good thing he, he, he ain't fall long on the ground. 
we are accustomed, so we don't even bother if they don't really treat you adequately. And sometimes you go to certain churches, you ain't really expect nothing. Some little children, people are looking like, you know what I mean? So you go and thinking it's a little charity case. It's a shando moment. Hallelujah. And some people let other people talk them into not giving to your pastors or not giving you your friend and all that because you're making them rich and you're making them this and them pastors and you know, yeah. I remember a teacher in school used to say the rich living out the foolish. I said, well, you're neither rich nor foolish, so you don't have a problem. Because foolish means people give into the pastor. You don't give. But you ain't rich either. So no problem. I don't know why people have a problem with what you do with your money. Yeah. Once I had to tell the principal, but I say, you play, play away every week. I ain't see you looking any richer. I take my money and I give offering. I do a question what you do with your money. You, you buy a costume for how much thousands of dollars to wear once or twice. And then you put it down. You can't wear that next year. I ain't telling you nothing. You show me a picture, I watch it. I make no comment. Then you come in to tell me about offering. That's none of your business. And I'm saying to you, if God speaks to you to give, don't let nobody, and that's the reason. He said, don't let your right hand know your left hand doing or your left hand know what your right hand doing. You don't have to tell nobody what God tell you to do. Uh, and I want to talk about that because when we talk about God as a provider, you have to sow seed. Yeah. And just, when I was I here, someday I'm talking, Marlene was there. You see that shop right there? They would go and buy coconut water first in the shop. One day in conversation, one of them buying, and the lady said, by the way, and started to talk. They said, oh, this is for the apostles. She said, the pastor in the church? And all you're making me take money from the pastor. From then on, when she get coconut water, the stock, enough for us to leave here and carry home. Because I'm, I'm telling Vivian, I'm traveling on Monday, I say, take some of the coconut water, it's too much to leave here. When I realized that this lady is sending so much coconut water for free, I went over there with two gift bags for her and her husband to say thank you. That woman hugged me. I bless her, I bless her family, I bless the business. They don't come to church. You understand? I remember Vivian used to buy corn by a vendor on the highway. And one day she happened to see him on TV. She says, you couldn't tell me you're a pastor, a Hindu lady. Hindu. She said, I wouldn't sell you no corn. And she tell him, she said, make sure you pass and don't worry to pass me straight now that I ain't want to sell you. <laughs> so he would insist he would buy a corn. He will buy one, she will give him six. Every evening he come in with a set of corn. The next thing that lady called him, she say, she end up getting saved. She said, I'm going to a church in Shogunas. Because one day she saw him on the TV, she was sick. She said, I, go, I went all about, can get me healing. And he said, put your hand on the TV. And I put my hand. Now the doctor don't know what happened to me. What happened to the disease? She went to her church. The next thing she called him to say, she had one last son. He wanted to be a uh, um, pilot. Because he didn't see her for a while. She said, I'll come back out to sell corn. Become a son. The son, the Lord, he prophesied the lady, the, the son now, flying plane. Yeah. You hear me? And sometimes we allow unsaved people yes. to get the blessing because they're wiser than you. Yes. When they realize it's the pastor, they give. Yes. When he used to go in the market, he used to try to avoid this man. He used to sell pumpkin. And the man won't take no money for the pumpkin. And so if you're a little embarrassed, so go buy the man every Saturday for pumpkin. <laughs> so he started to circumvent the man. One day the man said, Where, pastor? <laughs> we you passing all day? Come for your pumpkin. The man, he wants his blessing. Yes. Hallelujah. All John had an experience when they carrying down money out of the prison over on the islands. 
he asked the, the guy if we, we could get money because they have animals up there. And the guy was a Hindu, the driver of the truck. And he came in to drop some bags of money for us for the garden. And he was in the garden. So the fellow said, who is that? I was just said, my pastor. He said, a priest? What are you doing working in the garden? <laughs> he said, what happened to the men in your church? They let your priest work in the garden? No, Audrey said he likes it, he enjoys it. He said, but I ain't see nobody with him. And he had Aldrin speechless. He is telling Aldrin how to treat your guru. He said, you're doing good. You see this man you're bringing? You must help him. Aldrin said, are speechless. And he started to tell him, he said, let me tell you something. We Hindus, we know how to get our blessing. And he is now sitting down telling Aldrin how to treat your priest. Okay. Okay. My God. So we feel it's just about standing up. How long you say that and you can't see the manifestation? Because you wouldn't provide seed. Next one. Point taken. As I tell you, we ain't trying to get rich. God has good to us, and all of you know that too. He's taking care of us, but I'm just telling you, you must understand the principles of God. Don't let people on the outside, because all the talk they're talking to you, but when it's their priests and the people, they make sure they take good care of them. The Catholic Church became the Catholic Church because people gave them property. Everywhere in the world, you go. It's people donate property. That's why that church thing. But if you give me $20, they want to talk about the $20, but when you give a multi-million dollar property, nobody says anything. And let me stop right there, done. God is our provision. I'm telling you, all of us could testify that He feed you when you had nothing to eat. My God, there are people here who were unemployed and their lifestyle didn't change at all. Amazingly, God just continue to provide for them in their most difficult times. Hello! When you look back, you are all wondering how did I survive? What happened? Where it come from? Oh Hallelujah. Because men, he says, to give to your bosom. Yeah. He knows how to take care of you. Are you listening to me? Yeah. He will take care of you. Yeah. But you have to give him something to work with. Yeah. You may not have money. Give time. Yeah. Somebody, donate your time. Do something. Yeah. Because time is money. Yeah. Come and volunteer and say, is there something I could do? I'm not working. Let me help those who clean. Do something. God looks and he sees your effort. But you have nothing and you ain't doing nothing either. Protection. Oh boy, and you know how we believe. He's Jehovah Sabaoth. Your shield. Jehovah needs your banner. Sabaoth means Lord of hosts. And there's a word here from, I, you know, I know Greek scholar nothing. Margen meaning your shield. And yesterday, last week, Sunday, I talked about shield, I think. Sunday before, somewhere around there. Protection. Romans 8.31. Let's go quickly. Protection. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. And we believe in the prayer of protection in this place. What does it say? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. For some of them, you're dead already. Listen, there are some people who can't understand how you're still alive, you know. They don't know how you're in sentence yet, you know. By now, they think you're mad, staring mad, naked, walking the road. Oh, hallelujah. But as a hedge, Satan himself told Job, we are challenging me with Job. You put a hedge around him. A hedge around everything he's, he owns. A hedge of it, around everything he put his hand to do. I can't touch him. Yeah. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And everything they sent for you bouncing back. There's a shield around you. Hallelujah. Oh, we give him praise. Hallelujah. It's not for lack of trying. 
And listen to me, they could find you quiet in church. I remember, not in this church. They, we had hospitality. Small little place, kitchen open. This loaf of bread with my name on it. And the person wrapped the bread, I said, but like, they want me to eat it, the amount of wrappings. When I went, it's a good thing Vivian prepared different meals for the children. Nobody ate it but me. And I normally, in the, I don't eat in the morning. So I try to eat a thin slice of bread, I toast it, put a little butter or something like that, and just nibble. When I reach the middle of the bread Wednesday, it green with a five cents piece in the middle of the bread. You hear me? Pastor. And you trying to kill me. Me, I do you nothing? I call the hospitality people. I say, you know about this? Nobody don't know where the bread comes from. What I do you? You might not like me. But you go so far to mount a loaf of bread to get me to eat. I grew up in the country. You hear about these things. I never experienced that in my life. In church. It was in church I meet it. Shabande. I say, it's me you trying to kill. I don't dead so. And people offended because I said that. I don't care. Face contorted. Contort. It's not your wife they try to kill. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you think you are the only one that they care for, they're trying to kill, it's all of us. Satan don't like none of us. The devil don't like you. And John L. just gone to a new job. I say, consider everybody your friend and everybody your enemy. Listen, when you go to that workplace, all them is your friend and all is your enemy. Don't trust nobody. Listen, say little. All well, them who skin in the face and come in to tell you, and I tell them, I say, who did Tanti say, who does bring this carry? Yeah. Some of you will catch that later. Yeah. They even know what I'm talking about. Because the gossiper is always the one who is carried too. Yeah. So they bring in information to carry back what you say and add to it. Yeah. But he's my protector. Oh, hallelujah. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. The songwriter says, surround us, Lord. Surround us. If you're living in Trinidad and Tobago, you have to have his protection. Hallelujah. You don't dare step out your house because you don't know what is in the offing. storm of life toss me to and fro and there's a place a refuge that I can go he's a shield for Have you ever said to yourself, I really wish I can understand the Bible better? I want to communicate with God better. I want to be able to share my faith with others. Have you ever said, I'm reading the Bible, but I do not really understand it? Well, if you have ever said any of those things, 
I have really good news for you. My name is Gemma Duncan. My husband and I, Apostle Vivian Duncan, are the pastors of Divine Destiny Worship Center. And we have what we call School of the Bible. We started since 2014, and I'm going to give you a little rundown as to what School of the Bible is about and how we can facilitate you in fulfilling the needs that you have expressed. So the Bible is a one-year course that runs from January to December. Every Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then we have four all-day quarterly sessions, one Saturday every three months. Inclusive in all of this, we have movies. Uh, our main course material is the Bible. The Bible is the one and only resource book that you have to have. There are other resource materials that we will have on offer that you could choose to get or not get. If you choose, then you have to order those materials. But other than that, there are seven manuals that we use. And these seven manuals, you'll be going to see them on the screen, and I'll give you a little rundown as to what they are. The first manual, manual number one, is the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. Manual number two contains the historical books from Joshua to Esther. Manual number three, the books of poetry from Job to Song of Solomon. Manual number four are the books of prophecy. And the books of prophecy, they are divided into two sections, major prophets from Isaiah to Daniel, and the minor prophets from Hosea to Malachi. Well, now when you come to the school, we'll talk about why they are considered major and minor. Uh, manual number five, the New Testament books now. The books of history, the four gospels from Matthew to John. Manual number six, are what we call the Pauline epistles. The epistles written by Apostle Paul from Romans to Philemon. And then manual number seven, are the general epistles and they have a variety of authors and the book of Revelation, uh, the one prophetic book in the New Testament. The manuals are simply written and user-friendly. They are easy to use and you can use them as a tool for study in the future. This program is designed to meet your need to simply understand the Bible better. The Bible is the only text, as I said. Other resources are optional and are available on request. Ask for a brochure at 633-3780. And you'll see the number scrolling across the, the screen. The brochure will contain all the information that you may need. We are now open for registration. Well, I'm sure you are excited as I am about salvation and the package deal that God has provided for us. Stay tuned next time 
See you then. Bye.